allow me, if you will, a little bit of theorycraft on top of theorycraft this time. If you've seen any of my previous motor prop tests, you'll be familiar with uh, this kind of efficiency chart that I like. Here I've got grams per watt in thrust charted against uh, RPM. And here I'm looking at two different props on the same motor, a three inch prop and a two inch prop. So the three inches a heavier load, the two inches a lot less. Now it's important to note that the efficiency doesn't just drop off as the power goes up. And we've seen this a lot on these uh, 1106 motors where you've got this little hump uh, partway through where you actually start to gain efficiency again before it finally starts dropping off both light load and heavy load. Now I think where this hump is positioned in the RPM band of the test is actually really interesting. Now we don't have actually legitimate efficiency numbers on the motor itself yet. But a typical efficiency chart for a brushless motor is going to look something like this, where here we're looking at torque and RPM, and these different bands are the amount of efficiency, black being very poor efficiency, and yellow into gray being very good efficiency. So you'll notice that as you increase the torque at a certain, you know, hold the motor and give it more power to keep it at a certain RPM, as you increase the torque you're getting out of it, you're going to have a band of very low efficiency at the bottom, a peak somewhere in the middle, and then the efficiency is going to start to drop off again as it goes up. And we know that the load of that the prop is going to put on the motor is going to increase as it spins faster. It's going to be more air resistance in addition to the uh, the thrust pushing uh, that we're getting out of it. And so what I think we're seeing here in the profile of our efficiency, our grams per watt uh, over RPM, is we're seeing the torque requirements pass through in an in an arc like this so at our kind of medium rpm we're gaining efficiency we hit a peak somewhere and then start passing back through uh the area of lower efficiency up at the top now what we're looking at here is torque over rpm this doesn't equate to thrust so we can't compare directly against the results that, that we see in the thrust tests but you can imagine if we have a prop that is going to put a lower load, the better we can match this uh, torque curve to the curve of the motor, and, and the motors have different uh, efficiency as well, it's like you may have some that are more efficient higher up, or others that are, are, are uh, peakier, and the closer that you can match that, the more efficiency that you'll gain where you really want it. If you have a prop that's really high loaded, you may never be getting anywhere near the uh, peak efficiency that you can actually get out of the motor, potentially. And the same thing if we pretend that we have a, a very, very low loaded prop, we may be giving up a lot of efficiency if we're not loading the motor heavily enough and we're staying down in this area of low efficiency down at the bottom. So if you can kind of imagine as that being the point, and, and I'm not certain about this, but this is, this is what it looks like to me, that this point here is where we're crossing that band of peak efficiency. Unfortunately, because these are different props, they're not only loading the motor differently, there's different torque requirements for each of them, but there's a, a thrust efficiency in them as well. So the efficiency, uh, even though uh, this is the same RPM band and we've got two different loads, it's not quite um, lining up that, that we could assume that these would be like two different lines like that to compare. But if we can get some better data on the motor itself, I think that we might find that that's exactly what's going on here. Now, this doesn't explain the uh, the really high peak at, at very low RPM. Now, there, there are also different methods of controlling a brushless motor. Uh, so some of this may be an artifact of the ESC uh, or of uh, the test with my uh, voltage and current sensing. I'm only um, logging at about 25 kilohertz on here. Uh, so maybe this is uh, an interaction with the PWM clock of uh, the ESC, which should be around 22 kilohertz. But I think this can also provide more insight into the motor and the prop as a combination. For instance, looking back at this chart, we can see that as we decrease the the torque, we're going to pass through, if we're assuming that everything after this hump, this is the hump here, that we're passing into a worse and worse efficiency range on the motor, 
if we decrease that load, say by prop unloading, we're gonna push ourselves back down into a higher efficiency band. And if this is our peak here, the fact that the efficiency is dropping off past that peak, I think that this gives us a good indication that when we get in the air and you have prop unloading, this peak here is going to want to push up because the loading is getting lower and we're going to basically the uh, the motor loading at this section here is going to step back and so i think that we'll actually pull more of this efficiency into where we're getting uh, higher uh, throttle values on the motor if you saw uh, the efficiency not having this pronounced hump in it like say on this uh this two inch prop if we had a test and we had the dip and then it recovered and that was our top, our 100% throttle value there. The unloading is going to actually hurt us because it'll push us into an area of slightly lower efficiency and our area of peak efficiency is actually going to be beyond what we're able to hit in a, um, a sustained thing if the prop un when the prop unloading kicks in. So again, I'm not completely sure of this, but this seems to make sense to me and I think that that's an interesting thing to look for in these static tests to kind of extrapolate where we might end up efficiency wise uh, when we actually get in the air with the things and as a way to see how well matched the prop is to the motor we're not massively underloading it because we're seeing that peak in efficiency and we still have some room at the top where uh, prop unloading will actually give us a benefit rather than being a detriment